I am Jonathan Chaves, a scholar of classical Chinese poetry. But despite my specialization in poetry, I have been fascinated for years with the complex interrelationships among poetry, painting, calligraphy, and history, religion, and philosophy in China. And I've come to notice how somehow they all seem to come together at the Yellow Mountains, Huangshan, of southern Anhui province. These mountains are among the most beautiful in China, uh, and I would even say throughout the world. They have an austere, stark beauty. And in the period that interests me, the fall of the Ming Dynasty in 1644 to the invading forces of the Manchus, it is unusual that the Yellow Mountains prior to the events of the mid and late 17th century were hardly visited by anyone. They were very remote. They were very difficult of access. There weren't even any pathways into them. But at this time, the pioneers to open up access to the mountains were independent Buddhist monks wishing to turn their backs on the turmoil and suffering that was taking place in China at the time and to go into these magical fairyland-like mountains and make it possible for others to join them so that they themselves personally cut pathways for the first time into the mountains and built hermitages for them in the remote recesses of the Yellow Mountains. In addition to the Buddhist monks, Taoist practitioners went there hoping to revive or to in some way bring back the ancient tradition of Huangdi, the Yellow Emperor, after whom the mountains are named, the Yellow Mountains, who is reported to have concocted in antiquity an elixir of immortality, imbibing which would add hundreds of years to one's life, or even make possible immortality. At this period, the Yellow Mountains come to symbolize for the Chinese literati, the official scholar officials of China. They come to symbolize the deposit of ancient Chinese culture. There is a revival of interest in Confucian thought, in Buddhist religion, in Taoist religion, for example. And at the same time, there is an entire school of painting which is inspired by the stark, gaunt even, beauty of the Yellow Mountains, poetry and prose travel writing. All of these skills are demonstrated by the man that I will be featuring in my talk, Wang Hongdu, who in 1696 wrote a book of prose travel essays about various points of beauty in the Yellow Mountains. It is called Huangshan Ling Yao Lu, Comprehending the Essentials of the Yellow Mountains. And I have translated it now into English for the first time. In my talk, I will be starting with the painting, showing works by Hung Ren himself, a Buddhist monk, Jia Shi Biao, and Wang Hongdu himself, who was a painter, as I've said. I will go on to talk about Wang Hongdu's calligraphy, his poetry, which has been newly discovered in rare libraries in southern Anhui province during my researches in China just a couple of years ago. I will even be talking about my research and showing myself in the libraries finding these old books. In one case, the book is a unique copy not to be found anywhere else in China. And from all of these, I will derive poetic beauty, painterly beauty, bringing together the verbal and visual arts and the way in which the Yellow Mountain symbolizes through them a hoped for rebirth of Chinese civilization. Finally, I will talk about my own personal visit to the Yellow Mountains at that time in the company of a man, Wang Wusheng, whom I consider to be today's equivalent to the great painters of the past. Wang Wusheng is a brilliant photographic artist, and he has published a book of photographs 
of the Yellow Mountains, black and white, in all meteorological conditions, all times of the day, all times of the year, which is stunning and breathtaking. We will be looking at some of these photographs, and I will be suggesting that in Wang Wusheng, we have a living exemplar, a living representative of the great cultural tradition of China, again manifesting itself through the beauty and through the spiritual awe of the Yellow Mountains. Buddhist monks who are painters, Taoists who are poets, and so forth, all of them are using poetry, prose writing, painting, calligraphy, to point toward a spiritual essence, a numinosity that they felt to inhere in the Yellow Mountains, a legacy of the founder of Chinese civilization, the Yellow Emperor, after whom those mountains were named. That is to say, all of these elements of human activity, though today we may separate them into different categories, teach them in different academic departments, in the minds and souls of these artists and writers, they were all fingers on one hand pointing toward the same transcendent truth.